Hello, hello guys. We are here again and I want to thank you for being part of this YouTube channel and this big family. I want to thank you so much dearly from my heart. I feel like you are part of my life every day and you are family to me. And you know what? Today I'm just talking about that. But about building healthy relationships. Building other relationships is very important. And what are the factors that affect relationships? What are the barriers to uh, other relationships in life? What are the barriers? Because there are barriers to healthy relationships in family setting, in workplace, in many uh, different platforms. There are uh, different, what makes Healthy relations, what are the components of healthy relations and what are the barriers to healthy relations? That is what we are talking about today. And I would like to get your comments uh, in this video. Just put your comments there. Good build, you can just add on these points what makes healthy relationships. And what are some of the barriers of uh, healthy relations? Because those people read your comments there, you will be helping them. And you'll be helping us to get more points on what consists of healthy relationships in life. Because human beings are relational beings. There is no a single human being who is not a relational being. And even in God himself is a relational being. You see, we can see that in all the works that God did. And even... Uh, what Jesus did, Jesus did not work alone in, on earth. He and, uh, he and people, he and a group of people, he and a team. He and a team that he worked with, so he did not work alone. Yet he is God, but he did not work alone. He is a relational being. And we learn a lot from the relationship that Jesus had with the disciples and other people, how he related them. And we learn a lot from the relation that God, we are seeing God in his work of creation to him. Because God is not alone. That's where we learn the, the trinity of God. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we see God talking to these, uh, the three of them like, a, the, 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 let us create, let us create human being in our own image. Let us come, let us create human being in our own image. You see, so we are relational beings, and that we cannot avoid that. We are relational beings. So how do we build other relationships? Because relationships can be very healthy. We can have many friends, but unhealthy friends, unhealthy relationships. But hey, Having many people who are, are surrounding you doesn't mean that you are having the true friends. People have heard, there are people who have had many friends, they have had many friends surrounding them. But at a particular point of time, the year I saw, I was alone. Because at a certain point of time, they are left alone. Building every relationship such a a dire mat that we shouldn't work on in life. For me, it's very critical mat in my life and very essential, such that I have to work on it every day. Most of the time, I look at myself and I ask myself, How am I having right and really healthy relationship? I will look at my relationship with you the way we are letting, and I will ask myself, are we having healthy relationships? Is this relationship healthy? Currently, we have many things that are affecting relationship. At home. At home. We have many things that are affecting relationships at home. At a home setting. Knowing that we are living in the digital era. And like even the young children knows how to use gadgets nowadays. It's not a surprise. You are showing those how to use a gadget and they are always that gadget. They want to be that gadget at the comfort of their seat at home. 
the family unit has ceased to be there. It's in distinction. Factors that has come up compared to the things of the home where people used to gather together, social beings around the temple eating together, praying together, and playing together, praying together and playing together. Having stories at the evening. You know, when I was growing up, actually I grew up with my grandfather and mother, and uh, we used to sit down. After eating in the evening, we used to sit around and uh, we could listen to stories. We could listen to her narrating stories. Stories which and big lessons to learn from them. Today, those stories do not exist. Do people not sit around for their mother or father to tell them the stories of the hound that have big moral lessons? So, what has become the hound of the day is social media. We have phones on, in our hands. Or shouldn't have phones in their hands. The wife has phone in her hand. The husband has phone in her hand. And most of the time I, t I find this to be a self-induced isolation. You know, during COVID there has been a isolation. Kumekuwa na isolation, nasikia mtu wa mikuwa isolated pale. Mtu wa mikuwa isolated because you have COVID now. You, you don't mix with other people. Kuna room pale, isolation, unawako pale, so that you don't infect the other people. Nowadays, we are having that isolation in our, at our own homes. Yet we are sitting together, but we are isolated from one another. And what that has, has isolated us? The phone. I'm sitting here with my children and wife, but we are isolated from one another. I'm in my own world. Here. I'm in my own world. She is in her own world. The child in it is in her own world. At some points, we are sitting just facing each other, but we are laughing at different things. I will be laughing here. They are wondering what am I laughing at. She'll be laughing here and they, they will be laughing here and uh, we are wondering what is happening, but we are in different ways, isolated from each other, yet sitting in the same room. Are we asking ourselves what kind of relationship are we developing? Are those relationships healthy? Are we having healthy family relationships? Like, we, can, we have almost come to a point where by when we are holding the phone, the gathering, yeah, because we have the social media, I'm feeling like I have the world, the whole world in my hands. I'm feeling like I am holding the whole world in my hands. So the people who I used to tell that you mean the world to me, they no longer mean the world to me. The way I used to tell my wife that, oh, you know what, you mean the one to me, she no longer means the one to me because I'm holding the world in my hand. I mean, that Facebook uh, page that I have, and it has like 10,000 followers, and I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm having, a, a, mm, having 10,000 friends in my hands here with them. So what do, does one friend mean to me? I'm holding the world in my hand. You are in that Instagram account where you have one million followers or so. And you, you are sitting with your family members and you are there just uh, scrolling town, up and down. And it's like, I'm having a world in my hand, man. What do they mean to me now? <laughs> we are living in a in an amazing world. We are living now in wonderful times, in the most wonderful times that we have ever seen. And our relations are at a risk, a big risk, 
of becoming unhealthy. Many relationships are not working today because we feel we are holding the world in our hands and those people who meant the one to us, they do not no longer mean the one to us. You see, not at one point when you when 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 you are you are approaching your partner or when you are dating you told your partner that they mean the want to you you know that statement i find it to be a big statement sometimes we just is very strusy from the lips but in practicing that it means a lot because it simply it means if this person means the one to me, if the one is placed here, and this person is placed here, and now I am asked the, like the way devil presented option to, to Jesus during his time of temptation. He presented options like, you see this is the world, and this is riches, those are apartments, mansionettes, those are cars and uh, lights and everything. Now, just you need to wash me and I give you all of that. If I am presented with this world here, with all these things, all these mansionettes and all these things in the world, and I'm presented this one person here, whom I, 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 I have told that you mean the one to me, it means that I will pick this one person and leave this world with these riches and everything because this one person means the one to me. But if you have told your partner, like your wife, that they mean the one to you, if you are given the world and them placed here, it means that you will pick them and say, no, I don't need the world. With this riches, I need this person because they mean the one to me. Because I can buy the world with this person. Today, they no longer mean the world. Because you feel like we are holding the world here. It's a temptation to become a public figure because you want to have the world with you. It's not bad to be a public figure and to have that big following and all that. It's a great thing. But now don't forget those people who mean the world to you. Today, family is very crucial and very important in our lives. For me, I call family the first responders in life. You know, we have the first responders. Like, first responders are those people who attend at the scene first. Maybe in, in, in disaster responses, let's say there is an accident. In the, on the road, the first responders are those people who arrive there first to offer maybe first aid so they can save the people of these lives before they go to hospital. For me, I say family is the first responder in life. My, my, my wife is the first responder in my life. If anything happens, she'll be the first responder. Whether it is at night, whether it is raining, whether it is sunshine, whatever time it is, and all she will be the first responder. The same to me. And then there goes the children, the parents. Those are the first responders. And then the friends then come. That's why we need to build our relationships. Even from our homes, healthy relationships. We need time. We need time to put the phones down and talk. Let the phones not to be the world in our hands. Let those people who meant the world, when we met them, still be the world. Mean the world to us. It is a barrier. Social media is one of the barriers of healthy relationship. It's creating isolation. Is isolating us from one another. We are sitting in the same house. We are not talking. Everybody is in social media. We are disconnected, yet sitting together. You are traveling. 
you are in the same car, but you are not talking. There is no communication. Everybody is in scrolling their phones up and down. Not talking. Even when people used to meet and eat together, as a way of socializing and cashing up, people are meeting together and as they eat, everyone is on their phones. So what is happening to relationships? This is making our relationship to be unhealthy and unhealthy from day to day. And we should work on them. We should seriously work on having healthy relationships. And what another barrier to healthy relationships is selfishness. Being selfish. So that if you get into any relationship, you are looking at what am I benefiting with from this relationship. You are not looking at the other person like uh, how am I going to impact this person's life? How am I going to impact their life positively? And by the way, what am I going to gain from this relationship? And that is what we focus. We focus like, am I going to benefit with anything from this relationship or just it's there? Being selfish. We are looking at the other person, what the other person is providing. Always we are not looking at what are we bringing on the table for this relationship to be better? What am I investing in this relationship to become better? We are looking at what are they investing? Selfishness. A rescaling many relationship because of selfishness. Is killing marriages, selfishness, is killing relationships in families. Remember, you find brothers, they are not talking, sisters are not talking. Even if parents and their children, they are, they are, they can't understand one another because of selfishness. When you talk to them, you will be in discussion like this one does not help me, this one does not help me, this one does not help me. They, they are useless to me. So, then you, you, what are you bringing on the table in this relationship? So, think, think on the relationship on how can I make it better? You yourself, how can you make this relationship better? Not how will they make it better. And work on that. Work on being the, 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 the source of the bond, the source of strength in the relationship. And by the way, people who are selfish, they don't build a strong relationship because at the end, people will avoid you because you, they will realize you are selfish. And they avoid you. They avoid relating with you. People are selfish, they can't maintain a relationship because at the end the person will realize that you are just there to exploit them and they understand this is not a other relationship so they, they need to, to leave the relationship. Trust issues is another problem. Healthy relationship, like the trust issues. Are you able to trust one another? Trusting one another. Trust is the most important thing in a relationship. If you can trust one another, you can go far. Whether in a family, whether in an organization, workplace, whether in that institution, whether it's in church, if you can trust one another, you can go far. Trust one another. Trust one another. Trust, for me, I don't consider trust as something that someone must do to me so that I can trust them. Trust starts with me. Trust starts with me. If I have trust issues in my heart or in, inside within me, 
inside myself. It's very hard to trust anyone, no matter what they do. Because in the first place, I'm, I'm suspicious of anyone. Those people who have trust issues, they're like they are suspicious of anyone. They will be suspicious with you. Even if you come wearing a suit like the one I'm wearing, they will be suspicious of you. I'm not saying that to welcome anybody, by the way. But, but, but now, you don't need to be suspicious even to the people you have known, your family members. Or you are suspicious of your husband. Trust issues. Trust issues are making families to collapse. Marriages to collapse. Trust issues. You need to work on trust from within you. You need to work on trust from within you. Yet don't accept the people to exploit you because like you trust everyone. But build trust within you such that trust is not something you are struggling with. Such that you can trust your, your family, you can trust your friends. Because you, there can't be a healthy relationship without trust. And then trust, we need to keep our wants. We need to keep our wants in a relationship. Like both of us, everybody needs to keep their wants. If you say something, you do it. You keep your wants. If you say it, you do it. If you commit, do it. If you are not humble, say, I can't. Learn to say no and learn to say yes when you can. That's how we build other relations. Learn to say yes and learn to say no when you can. So that we can have trust and healthy relationship in our lives. Is that important? It's very important. Build trust in your relation. Build trust in your family. Build trust in your marriage. Build trust in with your children. Build trust with your friends. Build trust in that small group, in that fellowship, in uh, in whatever group you are. Maybe it's a women group some men's fellowship or something, beyond trust. At your workplace, beyond trust. Beyond trust. And be selfless. Invest in your relationships. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. And then control the use of social media. Don't be controlled by social media. Rather control it. Don't let it control you. Such that even when you are told to people, you are in your phone. One of the aspects that what I have told myself to do is that when even if, when I'm using my phone, if someone comes to me, I have to put that phone down and listen to them. That builds relationship that this person will know that I'm paying attention to them. They mean a lot to me. But if you come to me and I'm not, I was using my phone, I'm talking to you and I'm just scrolling. And what are you saying? Like, I'm just scrolling down, up and down. I'm not paying attention to you. It, mean, it means that you don't mean anything to me. I don't value you. And then that cannot build our relationship with you, actually. So... Learned, when you are talking to me, if you are in office, by the way, I want to talk to you guys who are in office, like myself. If you work in an office, don't talk to people when you are doing things in your phone. For the people come to you, learn to put that phone down and pay attention to people. Listen to them keenly so that but if you are doing business, you lose many clients by talking to them when you are doing things in your phone. You lose many clients, you lose many customers by talking to them when you are doing things in your phone because the first thing they see is you don't value them. You don't pay attention to them. They mean nothing to you. And then they move to the next 
service provider will provide to what you are offering for them. And this person will pay attention to them. So pay attention to your clients, to your customers. Pay attention to the people who come to you. Speak with them when you are not scrolling your phone. phone. Pay attention to them. And we love flourishing relationships. That's the most important thing, having healthy relationships with one another. So, God bless you as you we work on our relationships and as we become, uh, we have better families, better workplaces, better institutions, and even those small groups, we want to see them becoming better and better. So, God bless you. Shalom. I love you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and share with the friends. Share with the friends. Tell them to subscribe. Show them this YouTube channel so that they can benefit like you. God bless you.